it actually puts it in the order in which you will need it to accomplish the process described in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, which is uh, to change your consciousness from material to spiritual. So nectar of devotion is very scientific. It gives a whole process, step-by-step -step process for freeing our consciousness from the influence of the material energy and putting our consciousness under the influence of the spiritual energy. From maha maya to yoga maya. Okay. Maha maya means material illusion. And yoga maya means spiritual illusion. We're always in illusion <laughs> because our power of consciousness is tiny. It's atomic. Huh? But we can either be in material consciousness or we can be in spiritual consciousness or some combination of both in the transitional stage. Huh? As we are advancing in devotional service, we're neither in, in completely in material consciousness nor completely in spiritual consciousness, we're in some mixture. Uh, it's only when we get to the final highest stage of devotional service that we become in pure devotional service, pure spiritual consciousness. So that's what the last few chapters have been describing. Up until then, there's been a whole progression of different processes, different states. Uh, and uh, different references from Srimad Bhagavatam. Please don't do that. It's very distracting. And we have seen gradually how one uh, progresses through all these different stages until he reaches the perfectional stage. So the point, the big point here, is that there is a perfectional stage, that there is a known, definite, method for reaching the highest stage and that one should progress through all these different stages until he actually gets there. That might seem like a trivial point, but I've been in devotional, so-called devotee societies where it was more or less assumed that nobody could become perfect. And that's not right. That's not correct. That's not the philosophy of Nectar of Devotion, and it's not the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam, and it's not the philosophy of Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta Sutra spends quite a bit of time talking about how, unless there's something really, unless you've done something really, really bad, huh, you can attain perfection in this lifetime. The process is specifically designed for that. Uh -huh. And then uh, Srimad Bhagavatam tells story after story after story, after, and the Padma Purana and the Vishnu Purana tell story after story after story about devotees who attained that perfection by different devotional methods. So uh, uh, the message that we get from the scripture is very different. The message that we get from the scripture is that you can attain this highest goal in life. Huh? Several of our students right now, I mean, according to the things they post on our forum and like that, they're, they're, all, they're there. They're there. They're getting all these symptoms as described in Nectar of Devotion. and All these things are happening in their lives. And, you know. and this is just as by on the internet. Imagine if they were actually here and, and living this life every day and so on. What, how much power there is in these activities? You can't imagine. Huh? So um, oh, I got into a whole rap, didn't I? I was just going to ask for questions. <laughs> but now, now really, post your questions about this process and about the whole first section, 19 chapters of Nectar of Devotion that we have covered in uh, the last few months. Wow, it's been a couple, three months, hasn't it? We've been going over Nectar of Devotion. Yeah. 
since we got since we got here, remember, since before we got the house, I was starting. I started doing those recordings, and and we posted them, and um, then uh, Naviovna Prabhu kindly transcribed them, and we got so many uh, so many big discussions on the forum about it, and I mean it's really just been great. Okay, is there a question? Yes. Question from Amit. Is consciousness part of the soul or separate? Is red part of this book or is it separate? Is white part of this cloth, or is it separate? Thank you. Is he responding? Not yet. Is anybody responding? Are they, uh, are they listening out there, or what? Hello? I asked a question. David Lugan says it's a quality. It's a quality. So it's part of, the, the quality is always part of the object. Huh? You can't separate them. That's the whole point. You cannot separate consciousness from the spirit soul. Consciousness is a quality of the spirit soul. But this, consciousness has no separate manifestation or existence from the spirit soul. When the spirit soul is present, Consciousness is there. And when the spirit soul leaves the body, consciousness and all of its subsidiary qualities disappear at the same time. Uh, consciousness is required for intelligence, perception, emotion, will, energy, desire, intention, initiative, personality, individuality, so many other qualities. Uh, and these are all qualities because they don't have any, any tangible manifestation. See, you can't take, you can't take uh, personality and put it in a test tube and make experiments with it. It's an intangible, just like consciousness. But it's a quality of a spirit soul. And when the spirit soul disappears from the body at death, all those qualities disappear at the same time. So. Question from Question from Theo. How do you know if you have done something really, really bad in a previous life? <laughs> it would be in your chart. You would see the, re the reaction in your chart. Mm -hmm. You would have a difficult Saturn placement or uh, a weak sun or a very nasty Mars or Ketu, uh, Rahu Ketu uh, axis, something like that. And in that case, do all these methods have no effect for you? No, all these methods are good. They work with everybody, but you may have to, uh, you may have to go through the reactions to your previous activities before you get to uh, the perfectional stage. And certainly, if a person has a lot of bad uh, or difficult aspects in their chart from previous activities, uh, this spiritual cultivation of spiritual consciousness will help them get through it. Uh, I don't know how I would have made it through Saturn period if I wasn't a devotee. Oh, it was just awful, and it went on and on and on. Whew. 
27 years or something like that. It was horrible. Saturn period. Everybody betrayed me. Uh, my family, my wives, my friends, the devotees, everybody except Srila Prabhupada. So, if you have a difficult aspect in your chart because of bad previous activities, then uh, the best thing you can do for it is to engage in devotional service. And then you will be accruing pious activities, you'll be accruing transcendental activities. And as soon as that negative influence is passed, then you will get the result of all of those activities. And that's very nice. Another question? Yes. Question from